SMT Nation, we back. Nation, this may be one of the single most important updates out of AT&T we've gotten in a long time. This is probably going to kind of indicate the direction of where AT&T is going and how they're going to be moving in the future. We've had these inclinations and we've had these disclosures from them, but this kind of allows you to properly understand what they're going to be in wireless and what they're going to be in wireline. So stick around for all the details in today's video. I'll be sure to link this article in the description, although I do think the Wall Street Journal is going to put its content behind a paywall. So just let you know about that right off the rip. Uh, so the link will be in the description for the article, but also the link in the description for the real SMT Buy Me A Coffee. If you want to support your creators directly, you appreciate all the content and all of the videos that we make here on the channel, buy us a coffee link in the description. And also if you're looking for a really good deal on wireless service, you're looking for value where you also get incredible customer care, right? Top-notch service. We stand with our partner, Mint Mobile, who can offer you this great value, and they do so without even raising prices. They just added more data to all their plans, leaving prices unchanged. Really good stuff from our partner. The link is in the description. Use it, you'll save money, and you'll be helping out the channel. All right, so to be very clear and upfront about this, I'm going to give you guys the story, and then I'm going to give you guys my take. So with the story circulating here through Wall Street, and I think you're probably going to see some other stuff going on, uh, you know, throughout the week. AT&T is, I don't want to say pivoting away from wireless, but they are de-emphasizing the importance of wireless. They're always going to be good enough, in my opinion, right? They'll always be good enough, but they are not looking at wireless the same as Verizon, and T-Mobile. They just treat it different, right? AT&T is really focusing on their wireline business. They're really focusing on fiber. Fiber to their tower sites, fiber to the premises. They now even have a joint venture with BlackRock for Gigapower, a dedicated fiber wholesaler. And they're even their own first customer on that service to show you how important it is to their future. So with the Gigapower launch, AT&T is going to continue to push that service with BlackRock kind of biting down and taking on some of that financial responsibility. I think the distribution of it is, you know, break broken up into thirds, right? So, um, you know, just to give you guys an idea of that. But AT&T's fiber business is able to generate $6 billion in annual revenue. That number is only going to increase. And namely, it's going to be through things like Gigapower, as well as increasing the penetration within areas they already have their fiber U-verse footprint. And then, of course, expanding that fiber business to new places, right? And then don't forget what we've seen happen in the last year is that every quarter, AT&T has been able to increase the ARPU, the average revenue per user for the fiber home internet customer. Folks, this is exactly why AT&T is focusing on wireline. It is so challenging, so difficult, so competitive and wireless, it's almost impossible to improve your ARPU, the average revenue per user, which I think last I checked it was in the $53 range or something like that. It is almost impossible. T-Mobile basically consumed Sprint, an entire company, took all their spectrum assets, all their customers, increased pricing, on and on. And they were able to raise ARPU like 2 or $3 in like two years to show you how difficult it is in wireless, right? But AT&T sees huge potential winning and gains in the wireline business. Listen, that Gigapower business joint venture with BlackRock gets them into Mesa, Arizona. It gets them into Vegas, parts of Alabama, Florida, Pennsylvania, Arizona, new markets for them to penetrate and get into and be the beneficiary of that fiber access where we know that where AT&T gets the fiber customer slam dunk, they get the wireless business. This is really important to their business. It's, it's really about the fiber. And now that they have a company that's going to share the, the brunt of the expenditure, it almost feels like they're going to allow the wireless to kind of fall back and they're just going to really hone in and focus on the wireline while the getting is good. They've got fellow investors on their side, 
They're going to look for government funding, which we know that they're the best at, right? <laughs> AT&T very strategically builds the fiber in very particular locations where they feel like they know they can win. But they've got that, you know, if you build it, they will come kind of business. All right. And it, this is very capital intensive. AT&T has spoken to this. It's very difficult. But the ARPU continues to increase. The penetration rates continue to increase. So they're chasing it because it's hot for them. It's much hotter for them than wireless. Folks, wireless is expensive. Look at the competition. You got to pay for phones. You got to give people free iPhones and free galaxies. You got to get them to trade in broken junk old phones just to get them. You had look at what AT&T had to do to increase ARPU. They had to raise legacy plan pricing at least once. They have to give people trade-ins for $1000 for broken phones and and 10-year-old phones. Uh, they got to give people three-year lock-ins on the phones. They got to lock people's phones for three years and put them on three-year installments to get the money back. It is difficult. And then you got to compete with T-Mobile, who can't be beaten pricing, and Verizon, who offers in metro areas the best network. Right? And AT&T has taken advantage of everything in wireless that they could. The first net build, which they're basically almost done with. Right. What, what, what is there now to do? What is their motivation? Look at how they build the wireless network. Right. They're 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 falling behind Verizon in the 5G UW versus 5G plus build. Right. T-Mobile's way out in front. Right. And it just seems like they're always going to be good enough, but they're not going to blow anyone away in wireless. This is a clear indication of where they're going with their company. So I think it's important that we realign our expectations for AT&T moving forward. All right, it's clearly seems to me that what they're leading with as their company growth vector is fiber. Not saying their wireless is bad at all. Their wireless is very good. Look at their state reports. Look at how they test. Look at the modernized network. But the thing is, is from a business standpoint, where they feel like they can win, where the numbers are pointing them to, it really does seem to be the fiber. All right, so nothing, I'm, I'm not throwing asperges at AT&T. They're obviously going to do what's best for the business and what's best for shareholders. This is the direction they're going to go in. Now, they're not going to completely just abandon wireless, but they're just going to be focusing on this, given the economic climate, given the opportunities, and given the state of their wireless network, they probably feel like it's good enough, right? And they're going to upgrade the network at their own pace. We'll see what the CapEx tells us in the coming year or two. Excited to get your feedback on this, your commentary. Drop a comment in the comment section. I'd love to hear what you guys have to say on this. You all the voice of the people, the SMT Nation. Let your voice be heard.